Today we are going to be talking about how to pass your instrument check ride, and I want to make a three-part video series. This is part one to talk to you about instrument flying, give some practical tips and tricks for doing it well, and starting from the perspective of your check ride. So you might not be at your check ride yet, you might be in your instrument training, that's good. That's where you want to be. Um, so for this video series, I want to just mention, I am not a designated pilot examiner. I have been giving instrument pilot checks within the university where I work. And that includes, I've given, I counted up 22 different uh, end of course checks. So there's the check ride for our self-examining part 141 flight school. And so I have given a number of checks. So I've also been a flight instructor since 2004. And so I've seen a lot of different things. And I hope to share some of that information with you as you're getting ready for your instrument check ride. So the first thing to think about with your instrument check ride is you have a really awesome guide that the FAA has published in the form of the Airman Certification Standards. So you can find this on the FAA website and you need to use it to help yourself study. Now, I have this book. This is a good book. It's really, it's handy. It's a little thin book and it gives a whole bunch of questions and answers that you might be asked on a, on a check ride for instrument pilot. The problem is I didn't write this book, so I can read it and memorize things from it. But what I have found really works to get you in the material is you take your ACS for your check ride and you use it to develop your own special study guide. And this, rather than just, I mean, this is a good tool, but using only this doesn't do the full picture of getting to learn the material. So. When I did my most recent check ride, which was an airline transport pilot multi-engine check ride in the Piper Seminole, I took the ACS for ATP check ride and I made my own study guide line by line. And I'm going to show you an example. So I, I just typed it up in Word, but like handwriting it, if that works for you, it might help. But what I did, like here's my example, I went through and this is just one knowledge area for ATP. And it says to know about avionics and communications and then, you know, GPS systems. And so I just made a whole list of everything I could find out and put that on my own study guide. And eventually my study guide grew really long, um, which is good. Don't forget when you're going through the ACS, there are knowledge areas that you are going to be asked on an oral exam portion, but then the flight portion of the ACS, there's also a ton of knowledge areas in that part of the ACS. So don't neglect those areas. And I'm going to give you another example here. Um, for example, here's a picture of circle to land. And with the circle to land, um, I, I basically pulled some information from the FAA's instrument flying handbook. You can use the FAA's instrument procedures handbook. All these things are really helpful. And what I did when I made my study guide is I also, and here's, here's another example, I put specific FAA references. So like, for example, the atmospheric stability, um, I put things like CAC00-6B. Um, that AC actually is old, but but basically go through each knowledge area, not just the oral portion, but also the flight portion, each knowledge area, and make a list of all the things you can figure out under that area to, to get more knowledge and include your sources so you can look it up later so you can refer to that. And that really helped me with getting ready for a check ride. It'll get you into the material. Second, let's talk about the airplane. So you're going to go to your check ride. You're going to show up. You might have to go to another airport. The examiner is going to want to see some important information about your airplane. So be sure that you get clear copies or bring the originals, if you're able to, of your airplane's documents, including the most recent inspections, the documentation that all airworthiness directives have been complied with. Make sure if you have a GPS, 
that that GPS database is updated. And I don't mean like figuring out 30 minutes before the check ride that the database is expired. You can actually look up on Jefferson's website the list of the GPS update dates. You can look out in advance if it's like not your airplane, your flight school or whoever has the airplane, make sure that that database is going to be up to date on check ride day do inspections that you can do like the VOR check. So I've got a picture here of my VOR check log, making sure that that's been done and clearly documented. And that way, when you walk in to your in, uh, FAA appointment with your examiner, whether it's, you know, your self-examining check ride or your designated pilot examiner, you have all this ready and you look really, really, really organized. So like my inspection list, I should basically, that's the first thing they're likely going to ask you. And if you can't even answer that or your airplane doesn't meet the requirements, it's going to be a end and you're not really going to do the check right at all that day. So, and here's an example I put up of a list of airworthiness directives for one of our Skyhawks and our maintenance folks make a really great job of this. But like, if you don't have a list like this, make your own list if like if it's your airplane show up prepared because that's going to impress the examiner and number one thing you want to impress the examiner from the minute that you come in to meet with them one way to do that is show that you're really prepared from the airplane perspective so that's part one and don't forget to like and subscribe watch for more because i'm going to issue part two and part three of how to get your instrument check ride passed and tips and tricks on instrument flying. So stick around. Thanks for all the support.